everyone, Renee here, and today's gonna be sort of my summer sunscreen roundup video. It's August, I'm on my own time schedule here, but I really wanted to complete this series. Plus, sunscreen is something we should be wearing all year round anyway. And the ones I'm talking about today are some of my favorites. I'm also gonna talk about um, some sunscreens that I know I get requests a lot for reviews, so I will give you my opinion. So I've never hid the fact that I prefer the sunscreens that do have chemical filters. I actually like the ones that have a little of both to get the broadest spectrum of protection. My personal preference definitely lies with the Asian and European sunscreens. That has not changed since my first sunscreens video two years ago because the protection tends to have a UVA bias, which is just what's more important for my daily lifestyle. The UVB rays um, are what's gonna cause skin burning, but the UVA rays is what actually will cause photo aging. So, um, wrinkling, but also hyperpigmentation, um, asthma, and uh, all that wonderful stuff. And I also prefer the UV filters that are used in the Asian and European sunscreens as well. These have not yet been approved by the FDA, but if they are good enough to be used by these other countries, then I'm okay with that. Is that these are all photostable filters, so they will not break down easily in the presence of the sun and cause more oxidative stress on your skin. Unfortunately, a lot of the US chemical filters are not photostable, so they actually need the presence of other um, components to provide the stability. These filters were actually created specifically for the purpose of effectively protecting our skin from harmful UV rays. They also tend to be less irritating because the molecular size will be larger and they will tend to sit more on the surface of your skin rather than you know show up in a pee. So if you find that American chemical sunscreens tend to irritate your skin, the European ones or the Asian ones may not. And of course on the shallower end of my preferences, but certainly a very, very important factor is the whole cosmetic elegance. It's the whole invisibility factor, the non-invasiveness, the fact that you can apply it on your skin and then it just kind of it's like nothing, it's, it's like there's nothing there. So the most balanced filters for both UVA and UVB are zinc oxide, as we know it's a mineral, but also Tinosorb S and Tinosorb M. So Tinosorb S and Tinosorb M are both highly, highly photostable. They give a true broad spectrum, effective and equal protection against every wavelength. This will protect against skin cancer and also helps with aging. Uvenol A Plus is a very powerful UVA protector, and you will find this in a lot of Asian sunscreens. In US sunscreens, the only really powerful UVA chemical filter is avobenzone. Unfortunately, it's not a very photostable one, so it breaks down quite quickly. Uvenol T150 is a very powerful UVB protector. Again, it's completely stable. It's completely safe, just like the rest of these, and a formula doesn't require a lot of it to provide sufficient protection. So last year I did talk about this sunscreen, the Anessa Essence um, UV Sunscreen Aqua Booster. So I'm not going to review it today, it's just it is one of my favorite Japanese sunscreens. Although what I am going to talk about, there are sensitive skin versions which I personally really, really like. They're exactly the same as the original version other than they got rid of some of the irritating ingredients. So those with very sensitive skin or children can actually use them. Ingredients like alcohol, these have no alcohol in them. So this white version, which is the version I use more of, this has an SPF of 30. Five PA3 plus is great for everyday use, whereas this one has an SPF of 50 and a PA of 4 plus is when you're really out there hardcore. So this has a mixture of mineral and chemical filters. It has 12.5% of zinc oxide. This also has Univol A+, Univol T150, and Tinosorb S. This also has a lightweight, thin, milky texture, which applies and basically just becomes invisible on your skin. It's a wonderful base for makeup. I think the one difference between this and the original is in the way it applies. It's sort of like the feeling of it. It feels kind of oily when you're applying it, not greasy. It does actually dry down matte. It's like a primer. It does do a little bit of like skin blurring and your makeup will glide on over this. It also has that same um, aqua booster technology as the original Anessa, which is the same technology that is in the Shiseido Wet Force. Anessa is a Shiseido brand, so that's not too surprising, except I feel like this is the superior version to the Shiseido Wet Force that you see in the US. And that sunscreen, which I did talk about in my first video, it's great and the technology is fantastic, but it's texturally a far cry from these. It's a lot thicker, it's more casty. You know, unfortunately that formula had to be changed to be sold in the US. So I feel like these are the uncompromised version of what that should be. So what this Aqua Booster technology does is once the sunscreen comes into contact with sweat, sebum, or water, then the protection amps up by about 20%. 
There's also hyaluronic acid in here, um, plant extracts, vitamin E. So even though it keeps your skin dry throughout the day, it is not drying. So right now, as far as Japanese sunscreens go, this one is just so popular and very accessible. Any kind of Asian market will have this. This is Sunplay Skin Aqua UV Super Moisture Gel with an SPF of 50 and a PA of 4 pluses. It feels glorious on the skin. It feels really hydrating despite the fact that there is a hefty amount of alcohol in here. So my skin doesn't really get dried out from using this. In fact, I feel like it's sort of hydrating. It's got two molecular weights of hyaluronic acid to keep your skin hydrated, but it also contains collagen, amino acids. This is completely weightless, it disappears on your skin. This also contains their patented Solar X3 technology, which boosts sun protection by about three times. This actually reminds me a bit of the Hada Labo UV Creamy Gel, which I love so much and which I can't find anywhere anymore. Another sunscreen that I've been enjoying is this one by Make Prem, the UV Defense Me Blu-ray Sun Gel. This has an SPF of 50 and a PA of 4 pluses. So this is really interesting to me because years ago I remember buying the Sawasu Renodag Dual Care Moisturizer, which actually not only has an SPF factor to it, but it also has something called a TPF factor, which basically regulates the overheating and the temperature of your skin. I mentioned in my cushions video, of all places, that with every one degree that your skin heats up, it produces 10% more sebum. So this is the first product I've seen since then that talks about reducing the heat of your skin during the summer. So I love the way this applies. I love the way it looks on my skin. I feel it's actually kind of hydrating and moisturizing as well without being greasy or anything like that. But I did do the whole sort of half face test with this quite a lot. And on these scorchingly hot 90 degree days that we're having, I have noticed that the side that I'm wearing this does seem to be less flushed and heated than the other side. It's not like having an ice pack on your face, obviously, but there is a subtle difference. But this also does have a wonderfully hefty amount of niacinamide in it, but it also has like Santella Asiatica to cool, calm, and soothe. And it's also got chia seed extract. Through the grapevine, I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard that eventually this will replace the orange cap version, which I actually think is a good thing. This formula is far more stable than the other one and will give you more protection. So I figured I'd take this moment and give you my thoughts on the Glossier Invisible Shield since a lot of you asked me about this. In fact, a lot of you have asked me about this also in comparison to the Make Prem Orange Cap version. As a sunscreen formulation, this is superior and it boils down to pretty much just one ingredient. So the Orange Cap has avabenzone, homosalate, and octocrylene. This has avabenzone, homosalate, and octisalate. And it's the octosalate that makes the difference because that is what stabilizes avabenzone because otherwise avabenzone is uh, quite an unstable um, UVA filter. But this is one of those rare chemical formulas that don't contain octanoxate and so many people are sensitive to octanoxate. So this is sort of a gentler sunscreen. I feel like if this is your first chemical sunscreen that you've ever used, you know, doesn't leave a white cast, cosmetically elegant, then you're going to love this. I do find the size of this ridiculous. Um, this is the quantity of a serum, not of a sunscreen, where you probably even have to apply more of this than other sunscreens to get the kind of protection you need. But I've been so impressed by the quality of Avene's mineral sunscreens, um, and I equally love their chemical ones. This is Avene's very high protection emulsion, SPF 50 plus. While I feel like their mineral sunscreens are very hydrating and moisturizing, their chemical ones are actually so perfect for hot, sweltering, sweaty days. If you have normal to oily skin, you will love this because these are completely dry touch. The only one purpose of this is to protect your skin from the sun. So it is fantastic if you have super fair skin, if you have freckles that you don't find charming and you don't want them to get any darker, if you have melasma that pretty much gets darker if you're looking out the window, if you have any kind of hyperpigmentation or any kind of pigmentation that you're trying to protect from the sun, this will help. This is lightweight. It will sink into your skin turn invisible, you won't be able to feel it, it will leave your skin with a matte finish. And this will seriously keep your skin from getting greasy. That's why it's called dry touch, because throughout the day, under makeup, sweat almost doesn't stand a chance. Even in Asia, under this like oppressive humidity, it keeps my makeup intact all day. They have an ingredient in here called monolorin, which is what they use to control the sebum production and make sure things don't become a hot mess. This also contains a photostable vitamin E precursor, which really helps give additional cell protection. This is also great for sensitive skin. There's no fragrance, no alcohol, no parabens in here. 
let's talk about Bioderma. I've got two amazing sunscreens from them, one of which is better for normal to oily skin and one which is better for normal to dry skin. Let's talk first about Photoderm Max SPF 50 plus Aqua Fluid. This has a European UVA rating of 24. This is fantastic for sensitive skin for all skin. In fact, this is the latest version of their Photoderm Max because um, their earlier version, I remember, had alcohol in it and this has no alcohol in it, but it is just as good, if not actually even better now. This has no octanoxate, so you will not get irritation from that if you're sensitive to it. This is perfect for normal to oilier skin types. Although when I'm in Asia, that's sort of what I feel like I have. This will not dry out your skin though. It will control the sebum throughout the day, but um, you're not gonna have like these dry patches or anything like that. It will just disappear on your skin. It will be invisible like you didn't apply anything. This is also a dry touch formula like the Avene. In fact, this has a combination of three different powders in the formula to make sure that your sebum is controlled and you don't end up looking like a grease ball. There's also no oil in here. It's an oil-free formula. If you have drier skin or you're doing skin treatments like retinol or taking medication that's you know, giving you um, really dry, sort of flaky skin, then this is a great alternative. It's also a great alternative for the colder months. In fact, their Photoderm Anti-Age SPF 30, I really love this cosmetically. Um, it's not gonna have the dry touch effect, but it's so moisturizing and hydrating. I feel like when you apply this, it really sort of relaxes all those fine lines on your face. When while we're on the subject for sunscreens for dry skin, I actually really like this one from Innisfree. Their perfect UV protection cream, long lasting for dry skin. This is also so moisturizing. It also has some nice skincare elements to it, some great plant extracts. Um, this has chemical and physical filters. Actually, the only physical filter this has is um, titanium dioxide. This is a multitasker. You could use this as a moisturizer. It's got green tea extract, sunflower seed oil, centella asiatica, turmeric, and chia seed to just really nourish your skin. It applies in a buttery way. It's very moisturizing. It leaves your skin feeling so soft. For those of you who are sensitive to fragrance, there is a little bit of added fragrance in here. For those of you who are just no sensitive to fragrance, it's very subtle. And it's very sort of a... a it actually smells quite natural and minty even. Another one that I feel is great for normal to dry skin is this one from COSRX. Their Aloe Soothing Sun Cream, SPF 50, PA++++. This is also a physical and chemical combination. It does have titanium dioxide in it. Application-wise, just like the Innisfree, this feels so comforting on your skin. You know, there's absolutely no white cast. It disappears, but it leaves your skin feeling so soft and smooth and very hydrated. So it says that each tube of this contains 5,500 ppm of aloe extract. I don't actually know what that means percentage-wise, but it's it's got to be a decent amount. This also contains licorice root extract for some brightening and vitamin E. This has some alcohol in it, not a lot, not so much that you could smell it or you notice it, but if you're very sensitive, it's there. For those of you who are sensitive to fragrance, there is some added fragrance in here. It's not strong, it smells very soapy. So let's talk about these guys from Thank You Farm. I've got three of them here, the Sun Protect Water Sun Cream, the Sun Protect Light Sun Essence, and the Sun Protect Shimmer Sun Essence. My personal preference out of all of these by far is this one, which is the Light Sun Essence. It has an SPF of 50, PA of three pluses. This one to me just feels the best and I feel performs the best as well. The problem with this one for me, even though it actually applies as a thinner, it feels like a thinner formula, is that there's a little bit of pilling that happens if I apply makeup on over it and you know that's just not cool. So out of all three of these, this is also the one that doesn't contain any alcohol, um, which is why this one has a thinner consistency. It really is sort of very watery. This actually feels a lot like a lighter version of the Kosar X, so this could be better suited for all skin types. There is added fragrance to this. It's very subtle. It's sort of like this refreshing um, scent, but it kind of disappears immediately. So instead of this, same idea but much better formula is this one from Hamish. Their Artless Glow Base SPF 50 PA3 Pluses. I did review this last year, but more as a primer. So if you're into Charlotte Tilbury's um, Wonder Glow or Burberry's Fresh Glow, both of them are very similar in their subtle radiance. It just gives you that beautiful complexion. It looks really natural. This is exactly that. It won't make you look, it's not too much. It won't make you look metallic. It's also a thin formula that makeup just glides on over and just stays in place. But as a sunscreen, this is absolutely fantastic. It's like the ultimate multitasker. It's got physical and chemical. The physical is titanium dioxide again. This also has a really good hefty amount of niacinamide as well. It's right up there in the ingredient deck. It's also got some lovely plant extracts. There's no alcohol in here. There's a little bit of fragrance. It's very subtle. Um, it's, it's pleasant, not overwhelming. 
I do have one US sunscreen, though it is geisha inspired. It is so fabulous. It took me a long time to get this because it is on the pricey side. We're talking, of course, about Tatcha's Silken Pore Perfecting Sunscreen. It has a broad spectrum of SPF 35, PA 3 pluses, so it has both physical and mineral filters. This is 15% zinc oxide and 5% octosalate. They did not want any oxybenzone, octanoxate, or homosalate, or any sunscreen that can be irritating to your skin in their formula. But this also has the beautiful skincare ingredients in it as well. It's got licorice root extract, green tea, camellia, rice extract, all those wonderful things. But besides all of that, I have to say that this is probably, for a 15% zinc oxide product, this probably has to be the most cosmetically elegant sunscreen. It absolutely glides on your skin. It's invisible. It's lightweight. There's no cast. It smooths out your skin. It blurs. It blurs things out. You know, and I am one of those people. I will walk around with one half of my face, one sunscreen, the other half of my face, another sunscreen, just for comparison purposes. And even in the most sweltering, greasy weather, this side holds up under makeup beautifully. In the middle of a sticky afternoon walking around, this side is still blurred and perfect, whereas this side is kind of like greasy, pores look enlarged, and yeah. There's really no greasiness or shininess through the day for me, but at the same time, this isn't drying either. I feel like all skin types can benefit from, from this, but I think if you have normal to oily skin, you will love it. Um, so I'm gonna really quickly talk about l only because a lot of you guys asked me about it, and you asked me about it because it is so beloved by so many people. The UV Clear is the one that everyone loves. It's got a broad spectrum SPF of 46. It's got 9% uh, zinc oxide, which they call a transparent zinc oxide. I think that's just they're using nanoparticles. This has 7.5% octanoxate. I'm actually kind of surprised, to be honest, that they would choose octanoxate, um, especially because they say, oh, this is great for people with acne skin, this is great for people who have rosacea, anyone with sensitive skin, because octanoxate is so known to irritate so many people. Um, in fact, my sister has rosacea and she flares up very easily whenever she even uses foundation that might have octanoxate in it. Um, I can actually watch her go red in front of my very eyes, and it's very fast too. So I thought that maybe there's a chance they used encapsulated octanoxate, uh, which is what a lot of more virtuous sunscreens do nowadays. When you encapsulate octanoxate, it actually works um, better because it sits on top of your skin and acts very much like a mineral uh, sunscreen filter. And they replied no, so... The 5% niacinamide is nice, this is oil-free, um, this has sodium hyaluronate, vitamin E, no fragrance, no alcohol, it disappears on your skin, it's not heavy, I mean it's a decent sunscreen, I'm just bored. Lips are definitely the easiest skin on our body to sunburn, so it is really important that there is some coverage. I know I myself neglect my lips all the time. I am absolutely in love with these Suntegrity Lip CPR lip balms, they are the softest, most buttery lip balms. I'm wearing the peach shimmery color right now. This has an SPF of 30. It's 18% zinc oxide. They are moisturizing. They really cover your lips. This is pretty opaque and it also tastes a little sweet. In fact, it reminds me so much of the Kiehl's Butter Stick Lip Treatment, which I also love. This has an SPF of 25. The other lip treatment that I've been loving so much is also this one from Supergoop. Their Shine On Lip Screen with an SPF of 50. This is also water resistant up to 80 minutes. So what I really love about this is this is sort of a lip gloss, but you can also put it over any lipstick that you're already wearing. So it's basically a protective shield that you apply on over whatever your favorite lip product is at the moment. There's no scent to it whatsoever. You can use it on its own. You could wear it over a lip stain or lipstick. It's just really, it's just really nice. And this has staying power. It stays on through water. It's not sticky in the sense that your hair is, you know, your hair is not going to stick in your lips, but it definitely has a, it definitely sticks on your lips. So yeah, this is something you don't even need to reapply that often, but it's just perfect because it's easy to reapply. But yeah. Well, that's it for my sunscreen review, guys. I'm sure you're sick of hearing me talk about sunscreens, but I feel like I needed to make up for two years of nothing. So thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you have any experience with any of the sunscreens I've talked about, please share it. Everyone can benefit so greatly um, from your own personal experience. Let me know what you're absolutely loving right now. I would love to hear it. I have so much to learn from all of you. So yeah, until next time, I'm wishing you great skin health. Bye!